Hey guys, it's Eric Klopper here. I'm an attorney in Los Angeles. I'm also an advocate to protecting children from genital mutilation. And I have a bunch of exciting updates. Well, first of all, the my petition to the Supreme Court of the United States uh, in my case against Harvard University has been filed as of June 19th, 2023. But that is not just my petition was filed, an amicus curiae brief, friend or friends of the court brief was filed as well um, in July. And that was from Doctors Opposing Circumcision, Galdef, and Jews Against Circumcision, uh, which makes a bunch of compelling arguments. And independent of where my case ends up, uh, the Amici and I, we have some exciting litigation to help protect children from genital mutilation. Uh, also, uh, my case and Harvard's response, if they had filed the response, which they didn't, they waived one, but my case and the uh, amicus curiae brief has been distributed to the Supreme Court justices as of August 16th, 2023. And on September 26th of this year, 2023, the Supreme Court justices will be conferencing to decide whether or not they're granting certiorari to my case, which means um, I haven't been super public and doing podcasts and stuff, but that changes today because we want to get as many eyes on this as possible because as I'll explain shortly, my petition is a very clear-cut case of the First Circuit Court of Appeals and the Federal District Court judge saying, you know what, we're going to apply different rules to Harvard and if it violates Klopper's constitutional due process rights, well, we're willing to accept that sacrifice. Well, the Supreme Court is not willing to accept that sacrifice. There is precedent before that the rules apply equally to everybody. Everyone is equal before the law, and that is what my petition is asking, right? Now, very briefly, for those of you who don't know, uh, back in 2018, I used to be an employee at Harvard University, and I put on a play outside of work called Sex and Circumcision, an American Love Story. Extremely well received. The message was to protect children from genital mutilation. It was bombastic. It was provocative. It had, you know, strong language full frontal nudity, <laughs> inflatable penises, a sex scene, a sex doll, <laughs> you know, you name it. But it was all to kind of get people to talk about this thing that they don't want to talk about, right? And, you know, I'm Jewish and I'm proudly Jewish as well, but somebody had called it anti-Semitic. Um, and so Harvard didn't like the press and said, you know, we have this free expression policy. Your boss approved every word and action in the play. Your dean said that the Harvard was going to honor the free expression policy. So did our faculty at Harvard. However, um, this is not politically expedient for us to honor our word, so we're going to terminate you anyways. I, you know, this was a big cancellation in my life. I was a young man, uh, so Harvard terminated me, and then they tried to terminate my boss who committed suicide, who was a dear friend of mine. Total, you know, scorched earth, right? I recovered, um, got into Georgetown Law, so thank you, Georgetown. <laughs> that, was a, uh, that was a big recovery step right there, and sued Harvard for breaking all of its promises to me. Now, the federal judge, when he, he got my complaint, and then he got what's called Harvard's motion to dismiss, right, which argues why uh, the judge should throw out my case and close the courthouse doors behind me. Well, um, that judge found Harvard's motion to dismiss to be so persuasive, it was so compelling, that he granted Harvard's motion to dismiss with prejudice or with finality, be even before the hearing, even, even before my attorney was able to file um, a response called an opposition to Harvard's motion to dismiss, and most revealing of all, before the minimum amount of time had elapsed for me to amend my complaint as a matter of constitutional due process, right? Because every plaintiff in the history of federal proceedings gets 21 days to amend their complaint following uh, the defendant's motion to dismiss, which is just legal jargon saying, once a defendant files a motion to dismiss, the plaintiff has three full weeks to fix his or her arguments to make sure that they pass muster just as a legal matter. I got 15 days, not 21 days. When I asked the federal judge, hey, um, could you undo your dismissal with prejudice? Uh, the federal judge said no. I appealed to what is called the First Circuit Court of Appeals. Very simple appeal. This was a bright line violation, a very clear violation of my right to due process, to litigate my claims, and have the rules applied equally to me. And that is what we are asking the Supreme Court to uphold, right? So moving on to the fourth point, podcasts. If you know anyone, if you listen to a podcast, you know somebody who's passionate 
about protecting children from genital mutilation or protecting free expression in the academy or protecting due process rights for all and everyone's right to be heard for everyone to have their day in court. Well, that is essentially what my petition revolves around, those three major issues um, in our democracy. And I have a lot to say about it, right? I mean, I had two hours to say in my play a few years ago, but a lot has occurred. And um, if you want this attorney on your show, you want to discuss this case that's upcoming with the Supreme Court, again, if you know Joe Rogan, right, uh, you get me on his show, I will, you know, take you out to dinner, and we could discuss whatever you want in gratuitous detail, um, and maybe some other things too. Uh, but seriously, like, any podcast you know, I will make myself available. The Supreme Court justices meet on September 26th, so we want to get eyes on these important societal issues, and that is my update. So I appreciate you all, eric at clobber.com, and hopefully we'll be in touch soon.